All right, guys, this is my dad, Eddie. He's the measure master. And uh, what we're doing right now is we're just cutting this plywood. It's three quarter inch plywood. And here's all our uh, bracing boards. And there's the rest of the plywood that we've cut. And we're going to be putting the tanks together, two tanks, one seven and a half feet long by two feet tall by 28 inches front to back. I'm guessing it's probably probably somewhere around 300 gallons. Then we're gonna do a frag tank, which is still gonna be 20 inches deep by seven and a half feet long, uh, and also 28 inches front to back. And then we're gonna plumb the two together to a 40 gallon sump with baffle kit. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys at the next stage. Got the tanks put together. Uh, along with the stands, my dad worked late last night and, and finished the stands after we finished the tanks. So what we did on all these uh, corners here is we put these screws in that are these giant heads. But first we put uh, like a sealant along the whole line when we laid the board down. Then we just screwed it in to the top. Uh, all the way around to be helpful. It would have helped to probably drill holes first We had a few boards crack a little bit, but we just rubbed extra glue and stuff over them And we're gonna be sealing up the inside of the tank really well uh, The insides on the bottom. We're gonna be sealing up the inside really well with pond armor anyways, so now we're uh, gonna start painting the stands um and with the pond armor, we'll probably have to come around the top and maybe even down a little bit. I don't know. Uh, we just don't want any of that paint getting anywhere near the water. So uh, we'll see how it goes. We've really progressed quite a ways. I want to I want to explain some of this to you guys. On the right here, we got Robotic Robbie because he just keeps going and going and going. And we got my dad Eddie on the left here. We're just drilling the holes for the overflow box right now. He's having a hard time drilling here. That's not part of the normal process, but. There we go. Look at that. So this tank has the bigger overflow box. This tank over here, same dimensions, it's just not as deep. So the water level on this tank is going to be roughly 16 inches. Uh, the water level on the tank over there is going to be 22 and a half inches to 23 inches, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, this tank, what we've done so far, so I want to show you guys this. Um, you can see all the screws along the inside. We screwed from the inside into the two by fours on the outside. And what we did is we put these braces on here so that it would keep it from bowing outwards. And so it's some extra support. We did a rim around the top and around the bottom. And you can see the stand that it's on. And we went all the way around and this side we actually had to cut a notch out so that we could be able to get into the overflow box. 
because uh, yeah. the water level is going to be higher on this one and there's no way to get your hand in and down into the overflow box. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bridge over the top here. But uh, yeah, so we got windows on one side. After the pond armor goes on, we'll do two or three coats of pond armor epoxy paint. Uh, so it's not like a real paint. It's actually, uh, it's actually a epoxy. So it dries kind of like rubber. Here's a little sample that we did just of one quick little coat. But yeah, it's a lot of mixing. Kind of expensive. But still, if we were to buy two tanks like this of glass, we would have spent five times as much. Uh, we did put a little bit of work into it, but it's been a fun experience. And here's Robbie again. Hi, Robbie. How you doing? Robbie's been helping us out a lot with these tanks, and uh, he's put in some good work. You, uh, you mix it? So, so yeah, yeah. We're about to mix that up. We're about to start mixing it. So yeah, so we put these braces on the outside and then a few spots we had to go around and let's see if I can find one. So here's a little example. There was a little notch that was kind of notched out of the plywood. We just put some uh, sealant over it to help kind of keep it flat. Another spot down here. Um, just to make the epoxy go on a little bit better so we're not having to, you know, dab it into deep spots. and So it's going to be as flat as possible. And what we're going to do is we're going to come out with it around the top edge too in case any water drips on the edge. We don't want that water to touch this paint and go oh, back so into the tank. So we'll pond well, armor over the whole thing. But yeah, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, it's been fun so far. It's about two two days of work, several hours each day. Uh, it's been pretty fun. Ran into a few issues, had to go to the store several times. I'm sure we'll have to go again at the plumbing part. But yeah, so we're getting ready for the epoxy. We'll check back with you guys. What do you got? Snake. Oh, you got a snake? Hello, snake. Say hello, snake. Hello, snake. Put him back down. <laughs> Should we go let the snake go in the woods? All right, here's my mom, too. I don't Hi. think she's been part of any of the YouTube videos yet. My mom, Sandy. <laughs> she's uh, hello. just having fun up here, enjoying, mm. enjoying this beautiful afternoon. Yeah, it is a beautiful day. There's Elian. Look at that gray hair. All your gray hair? Yeah, look at all that gray hair <laughs> on Sarah over there. All that gray hair. <laughs> it's such a beautiful evening. All right, guys, here we are with the epoxy pond armor, rolling it on. Word to the wise, wear gloves when you mix this stuff up. My hands are coated with rubber right now hard rubber but yeah once you get the hang of it it's really not too bad you can see how the first coat is scary and you're gonna be like oh I don't have enough but just keep rolling it builds up in the brush and you can see here it's going on pretty nice so and at the end you're probably gonna have to go by with a brush nope no foam brush tried that earlier it's not not a good fit, so. Should we flip the tank up? But yeah, it's kind of fun when you when you get going with it. Robbie doesn't look like he's having fun. <laughs> just gotta, just gotta be able to work with it, and yeah, it's crazy to think that this is gonna line and seal the whole tank. So. Yeah. So. This stuff, uh, it's kind of actually fun. And we're like rushing, so it's kind of like a game. <laughs> but yeah, look at this. I know it looks like it's going on real nice and thick, but man, this wood is soaking it up. It's like trying to spread cold honey. Cold honey. Or you deer hunters out there, it's like molasses and frozen molasses. <laughs> Pretty thick. But uh, we're doing it. We're going. Look how much that's already soaked up right there. Crazy. 
you'll have to cut back in with a brush and hit you know some of the holes that are sunk in you'll just have to do it so make sure you have all your equipment that everything that you need and might need better to just have it on hand and be prepared have it not needed then need it not have it. there you go word of wise with robo robbie over here all right Whew. sorry guys just got done wiping this out with a wet towel still got to wipe this one out uh, but so we're in between the second and third coat now and it says if you let it dry for more than 10 hours you should sand it so we just our uh, sander over here and hit these hard not super hard just a real quick sanding going over the top with some 80 grit sandpaper got in the corners with a little sheet and it looks like you can see the wood in the corner but that's really just the light reflecting so I think we're pretty close to sealed up for the most part um, just gonna do another coat maybe two one for sure gonna really try to cake it on so the reason you want to sand is just to give some grooves for that new paint to hold on to um, I keep saying paint but it's pond armor and epoxy uh, but yeah so really coming along a lot of work I'm sweating but it's fun when you get to the painting part it's actually pretty fun so plus when you sand it also helps you to be able to see what you've gone over too and yeah one thing I like about the pond armor epoxy is we really slopped it on here and you can see a little lip here uh, but the corners we just dumped it in but it blends together so well um, I mean this is all going to be covered with uh, sand anyways this is the bottom right here here's the windows uh, so you won't really see those lines but uh, but it really does blend together well here is a divot in the wood probably should have filled it in first but it's really leveling out pretty nice so uh, yeah I love this stuff way way nicer than just regular paint but uh, we're gonna keep at it uh, gonna wipe this one out now so we'll see you guys in a minute We've got the glass for the tanks. So, look how thick. Half inch. We went a little bit cheaper, so it does have a little bit of iron in there still. It's got a little bit of a green tint to it. But, uh, we also did a water test on our sump tank here. So, it's like a 95 gallon sump tank, just made out of plywood. We got one brace in the middle we found out we're gonna have to do two more even though the water will never be this high in there hopefully it'll never be that high um, so yeah it's been in over 24 hours and no leaks at all the pond armor pond paint worked but uh, so now we're just gonna put the glass in and see see how it looks in there <sighs> got the rest of it in my truck here hey Simba so here's the rest of the pieces. We're going to be siliconing them in. Okay, so here we are on the first tank. You can see we've got the glass siliconed in. Right now we're trying to... We, pick, we taped around the edges to try to make it a little easier to pull the silicone off, but it actually hasn't really made it much easier. No, that's helped. It's we had to Got a trim a line. <laughs> we had to cut it out with a utility knife. We definitely need to use more silicone on the next try. But you can see how this this piece sealed up really nice. You don't really see any any 
divots or breaks in it. This piece over here, you can see it still is completely sealed. And so we sanded first too, to give it a little something to grip to. You can see how most of it's sealed, but there's a few little spots like right here that it didn't go all the way through. So we went and bought just a bunch of extra silicone. And for this tank over here, We've got it pre-taped. We haven't we haven't glued or siliconed it yet, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna really cake it in there. So hopefully, uh, you just want a perfect, perfect coating. Even if you have to use extra and cut it off after, it's better to to have more of a seal than too little. All right, guys. So on this tank, I think we'll show you a little bit of the process of how we are going to silicone the glass to the tank. So like we've gone over, the, the tank is just cut out with glass or uh, empty spots for glass. And what we did is we leaned the glass up. So we had a glass company, an actual glass manufacturer, sell us some glass for pretty cheap. Uh, for both of these tanks, I think it was like 500 and 500 bucks with a military discount uh, But it's not low iron. It's not starfire. It would have been triple the price if it was but I think this is going to be great for what we need and So we are cleaning the edges of the glass. We've already sanded We've sanded on the inside of the tank and so that the silicone has something to grab to now we're just wiping down the glass and while it was standing up we taped around so that afterwards uh, when we're done siliconing, we can just come and do one cut with the utility knife all the way around and should be able to just peel the tape off with the excess oozed out silicone. Uh, and that's how we're going to do that part. And we're going to put extra on, so we're going to put silicone both on the tank and on the glass part. Even if it oozes out all over the place, we'll deal with it. But it's better to have a good seal than to have to try to fix a leak or something later. Uh, and silicone is much easier to cut than to have to come on and put more on later. So if you look over here now There's a spider right up there Might be dead <laughs> But uh, this is the tank that we already finished and We're just filling it up right now. The water level is actually coming up. We're almost at critical mass right there This is this is the part where uh, we're gonna really be concerned and keep an eye if you make it past these first three or four inches of the glass with no leaks there's a good chance that you're gonna be pretty safe so this is just fresh water it's not salt water or anything uh, we're just leak testing it and uh, hopefully things will be good with it so keep watching and uh, we'll show you a little bit more of the silicone process all right here we are just a short little update our water level is roughly seven to eight inches above the the two by four level and all we're seeing because our water is so cold up here in minnesota all we're seeing is a little condensation on the outside we're not seeing any leaks anywhere down the sides here Along the edges, we're not seeing any water dripping down here. So far, so good. Just doing the caulking of the second glass piece, and it's going really good. Just putting in more caulk on this one. Um, so we're putting a little bit on the inside of the tank here on the wood, and then we're also putting it on pretty thick on the glass. And when I mean thick, if you take a look at that, the way that I'm putting it on the glass is about three times that much. So, we're, show the beads on the other tank there. We're not. The glass, how big the beads are squirting out. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see how much they're. Pretty good. So all the way around. Almost too much, if you ask me. We might be wasting a little bit, but it's only three and a half bucks a tube. So we're just gonna keep going here. All right guys, so we've finished siliconing the second tank. And I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited. Not only did I get to work on this with my dad and we get to do it together, 
but uh, it actually looks pretty darn good. So as long as there's not an issue with the actual uh, pond paint, the liner of the tank itself, I, I think that the, the silicone job is about 100% uh, sealed. You can see the bead all the way around. I mean, it's just oozing out the edges. And the thing about it, too, to keep in mind is, so water's going to be inside the aquarium. When it's inside, water pushes outward to all the edges. So down, outward, to the sides. So when you're in, the water is actually going to push more against the glass, which actually is going to help seal it even more. And the silicone does have a tiny bit of play, especially when you're dealing with two tons of water, which is going to be the weight of this tank. So I'm excited. I think it's been a really cool project. It's been fun to do. We've probably spent more money in some certain areas than we needed to. Uh, but this is the first time we've done it. It's been a learning experience and in the end we were just talking about it We've probably saved Probably 75% of the money that we would have spent if we would have bought two huge 300 gallon uh, All glass aquariums plus we got the kind of custom do them where we wanted the overflow to be at this water level is going to be a little bit lower you see it's only going to be you know three quarters of the way up the glass which is going to be good for when you get your hand inside and you can reach down easy but uh yeah so we got to kind of make them the way that we wanted and there are a few changes that we'd probably make if we do it again and we might uh depends how the business goes but we might uh expand it and we might make some changes and uh we'll just look forward to making another video and showing you guys some of our updates at that time but uh for now things are going well and and i think uh my dad and I are both pleased. Yep. So I think we're going to have a pretty awesome aquariums and we'll be ready to go into production soon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, the most expensive part of this would probably be to ship it. So <laughs> otherwise uh, you can drive up here and pick them up if you want to make a road trip for a couple hundred bucks in gas. But uh, yeah, doing some price checking for some nice 150 to 180 gallon glass aquariums which are about half the size of these. It's, what was it, 4,000 bucks? Yeah, I would say the two tanks together with the pond paint, with the glass, with the plywood and two by fours and then the stands, we probably are um, probably at about $1,300 for two tanks like this. They would be about 3500 on sale a piece so they'd be seven thousand dollars for two tanks and and that's not even for a 300 gallon tank if we actually found a 300 gallon glass aquarium that's eight feet long like these are i i guarantee it would be at a bare minimum price 4500 bucks if you guys know of a uh, 300 gallon aquarium for less than four thousand uh, let us know but uh yeah oh and there's one other thing i want to show you guys really quick it's not out of the box yet and because of my recent vacation and our trip to worldwide corals and top shelf aquatics i haven't taken my videos off here so i don't have much space left but uh this is our frag tank so we actually did order a 48 by 24 by 6 inch tall glass frag tank um it's got a all the built-in overflow it's not an all-in-one so you still need to plumb it into a sump but uh yeah that's it right there so it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty cool i think we're gonna do two separate sump systems for these aquariums i think we're gonna do the big the big tank uh, so one of these is the water level only goes up I think 14 or 15 inches this one here the other one is is taller so it's much deeper and the water level is going to go up higher too you can see kind of the overflow hole down there and uh so i think we're going to do this one and the sump and the sump that we have out here the 90 gallon sump that we built out of plywood and pond paint with the frag tank in the garage those three will all be connected 
and then this one will actually have its own separate 40 gallon sump tank so i think that might work out a little better plus it might give us some more options um, and if these don't work out and they leak we've got the option of turning them into flower beds and that would be a really good thing or vegetable gardens so these suckers are heavy we uh we finished silicone in the glass in the big one here over there's the shorter one did the water test 24 hours no leaks at all actually there's probably a little bit more than 24 hours but uh you can see there's a bunch of crap in there now but uh we're just filling up the big one now so I think from where the water comes out of this tank it's probably going to be about 270 gallons full or maybe maybe 260 it's hard to really tell but uh, yeah so hopefully there's no leaks in this one if there isn't then everything's good uh, the silicone's been drying for about 24 hours. My dad said it seemed a little bit wet in some spots when he was uh, taking the beads off, but that's alright, because those are the thicker spots where it actually is in between the glass. It's probably thin, so I think it'll be alright. We'll uh, fill this up, let her sit for a day or two and if everything's good then it's gonna be time to hook them up all right here's our room this is where the tanks are going to be going man really doesn't look like much room in here but uh, to give you a little perspective there's a standard 40 gallon breeder right there little dresser for some supplies and a bench to work on then uh, you can see our inch and a quarter PVC tubing for the plumbing two pipes over there hopefully we won't need more than that but uh, yeah got several outlets electricity is good in here so got a fan this is where they're gonna be we're just hauling in the stands right now all right, so we got our first setup in. We got some glass cleaning to do. It looks like some silicone got on there. Stuff will just wipe right off. But uh, got the stand in. Then we got our homemade sump tank in. With some nice, nice room to work with there. And we got the aquarium in. And might have to pull it out another inch or so because the overflow overflow is going to come out the back here and go down into the sump. And there'll be a splice that comes out and goes into uh, another tank here. They'll, they'll join together. So, yeah. It's going well so far. Can you say hi?